I'm Jeannie, uh, a project manager at Local Projects. We are an experience and exhibition design firm focused on museums, cultural institutions, and attractions. Uh, we are a sassy group of 60 people, um, architects, graphic, motion, and UX designers, content developers, strategists, project managers, and strategists. What brings us together at LP are two things, ambition and a sincere curiosity for new approaches to storytelling and human interaction within the public space. We look at design and technology in service of human stories, and we are trying to break the habitual patterns on how visitors usually engage with content. We are constantly looking for innovation with a point, which usually means providing unconventional and meaningful approaches to education. We want to help turn cultural institutions into places where visitors are excited and engaged, where they can relate to the subject matter through their own curiosity and expression. And then hopefully, through these experiences, connect with more empathy to each other and society. So I frequently get asked, how did I end up at local projects? Well, so I thought I would get a little personal here, especially since I'm kind of at home at Creative Tech Week. Um, I've always been really active making media, uh, media art installations, whether writing custom code for CV applications or making generative animations building battery-powered projection systems, or designing multi-channel video installations. I spent a number of years touring internationally, producing technology-driven artworks at many of the cultural institutions that Bill already mentioned. These photos are from a Claude Wampler work where we projection mapped band's, band members rehearsing back onto the band equipment using focus smoke machines. I also had an opportunity to work on an edition of Mozart's Enchanted Flute Opera at the Monte Carlo Opera House in Monaco, where in addition to designing all the motion graphics for the opera, I built custom software that delivered three times the resolution video of most commercial scalers at the time uh, to the 38 meter wide projection wall that was the signature piece of the set. After coming back to New York uh, and feeling quite motivated to continue developing technology-driven work within, the cultural, within cultural institutions, I joined the Guggenheim Museum, leading the installation of a 20-piece media collection show called Haunted. I moved on to the New York Historical Society, where I worked on dozens of shows, and this is the first time I really got to dive into human interaction design and how to use engaging interactive media to tell a story and spark curiosity. I'm really thankful for the opportunities I had there to experience the value of transforming narrative into experiences and learning that the most memorable content experiences are had through interacting with the content and each other and enabling the self-expression of the visitor. All of which brings me to the project I'm currently working on at Local Projects, which I'm really excited to share a preview of with you. The Planet Word Museum is a museum dedicated to the language arts that will open in Washington, D.C. next year. Their mission is to inspire and renew a love of words, language, and reading through unique, immersive learning experiences. The museum will be a space to explore words and language that's grounded in a solid understanding of language arts and science. There will be nine galleries of interactive media across three floors of the building, covering a range of topics such as the origin of words, techniques, techniques of song or speech writing, the language of advertising, or even why words matter. It will also be the world's first voice-activated museum, or so we hope. As visitors move throughout the galleries, they will use their voices to interact with certain exhibits. One of the main experiences controlled by voice commands are the beacons. These are screen-based activities that complement the primary experience of a gallery, offering additional perspectives on each gallery's topics. During our software prototyping process, we tested several different speech-to-text APIs and found the most success with Microsoft Azure's speech-to-text service. This is an example of a beacon experience you may encounter in the humor gallery. To start the experience, you would say, let's joke around. You're then prompted with a choice point, and you use your voice to select the option Howard. And there's audio. Thank you. As a robot, I don't know what humor is, but it seems to be important to you humans. So I'm collecting data to try to figure out what makes something funny. 
E.B. White said, explaining a joke is like dissecting a frog. You understand it better, but the frog dies in the process. That might be true, but I've noticed a pattern. Many researchers say things are funny when they mess with the expectations of the audience. Here's another pair of cartoons. Which of these is funnier? Okay, you chose the cartoon that uses the name Howard. Most people agree with you, and so it seems that certain names, words and sounds are funnier than others. Here is a quote by Neil Simon that I found. Words with K in them are funny. Casey Stengel, that's a funny name. Robert Taylor is not funny. Cupcake is funny. Cucumber is funny. Cleveland is funny. Maryland is not funny. Let's do another one. Which of these is funnier? Let me try to figure out why that was funny. Okay, thank you for waiting. I just read 742 books about comedy. It appears there is a difference between messing with expectations and being totally random. So, as you can see, the beacons are built to be voice-commanded mini-games found throughout the museum. Each one aims to provide an engaging deep dive into the topic of the gallery. One of our introductory experiences in the museum is a giant projection mapped word wall composed of approximately a thousand words that takes you on a theatrical journey through the origin of words. The voice of Planet Word offers stories and prompts the audience to guess uh, the answer to a question or choose a direction by speaking aloud. The Unity-based Azure application we've developed recognizes approximately 80 different voice commands, enabling the visitor to navigate through the theatrical stories based on their curiosity or interest. Another engaging interaction in the museum is our immersive Word Worlds gallery, where visitors pick up a paintbrush, dip it in a word palette, and paint across the scene with that word. The landscape comes to life as the brush adds motion and imagery on top, and the scene is constantly evolving through the combination of word selections. The palette contains 12 different words that will influence the visual display differently. There are also objects in the scene that are transformed when certain word combinations are achieved. There are over 120 different permutations of the landscape that can be experienced by combining words. This is a quick prototype of the paintbrush in action from last year. Another gallery within the museum appears as a library. This is a gallery where, a where the visitors engage with the written word, and they select between 50 different books that are available on the bookshelves. Those books are then set down in book-shaped recesses milled into a long library table. After the book is set down, overhead projections reveal magical animations of favorite quotes from the book or celebrities talking about why they love that book. This is an example of an early prototype from last year as well. I was in junior high school when I checked out To Kill a Mockingbird from the library. Also in this gallery is another voice commanded experience, the dioramas. Nine framed mirrors are mounted throughout the library with a plaque containing a quote from the book. When the quote is spoken out loud, an artistic diorama depicting the scene from a book is illustrated behind the mirror as another quote from the book plays out loud. There are many other en engaging educational experiences within the museum. Planet Word is a new kind of museum built on an idea rather than a collection of objects with the vision to inspire the literacy needed to meet the demands of today's economic, social, and civic challenges through engaging experiences with language. And that's all I have time for today. I hope you'll come visit when it opens next year. Thanks very much.